Okay, it's 6.04 and the Conservation Commission meeting will come to order. The first uh, order of business, um, it's not on the agenda. We have some housekeeping items to vote on. Um, we've got Mr. Bobinski here from Public Works who would like to uh, go first. Um, we would have to vote on that. I'll make a motion to allow that. <coughs> There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Okay, um, that taken care of. <clears throat> there was uh, correspondence regarding the application uh, for review before us tonight. And um, while this is not a public hearing for the application, and we have pub a public comment uh, section at the beginning of the meeting, it's probably too lengthy to address within the five minute uh, period. So um, what I propose is to let the applicant present uh, in, a, in entirety, uh, and then we can, I can read the email, uh, at which point we can address the application and then follow up with the applicant as, as necessary. Is that amenable? Yep. Do we have a motion for that? Make a motion to allow that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right, motion carries. All right, first order of business is the approval of the minutes from the April meeting. Just have a couple of things. Under new business, um, Second paragraph, just that you've got um, under Meadow Way, uh, request input from the board, I changed that to commission. And concerns about screening, I add the view, so screening the view of the water. It for me. Anybody else? Do we have a motion? Should I call on someone? <laughs> okay, there's a motion to accept as amended. Uh, second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Mr. Bobinski. Um, I would um, summarize this, but I think you're capable, so. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Mike Bobinski, Public Works <coughs> Director for the city. Um, first of all, thank you uh, very much, uh, commissioners, for uh, making the change in the agenda to allowing this topic to be heard first or early in, in your agenda. So I appreciate that. You do have a long uh, other agenda items that are important as well. So I'll, I'll just get right to it. In your packet, there should be a letter or a memo from me um, to actually Michelle Mears, uh, the planning director regarding kind of the background, what the Department of Public Work, what the city really is experiencing uh, with respect to illegal dumping, um, uh, trash left behind in many ways uh, from some of the unhoused uh, folks in our community and particularly we're noting it in our open space uh, very recently we had a request actually this will be my third request for uh, the open space um, behind uh, cinnamon ridge and sunningdale for cleanups uh, we have engaged uh, and and following those reports we actually did surveillance and went out to at least see what kind of debris it is in the kind of the byways and the isolated areas of the open space and they are uh, examples of encampments um, debris left behind when folks move on uh, and it's not just uh, cans and bottles and papers and backpacks it's needles and other debris that we are not trained to deal with uh, through 
our own operations, at least through the public works, the traditional, our highway guys and so forth that go out typically and would clean up illegal dumping on our streets. So the last couple of times, we actually have engaged the services of a company, ServPro, some of you are familiar with them. They do um, a lot of environmental cleanups and so forth. And they do a great job and, and they're very helpful. We had this third request that generated my, my ask of the commission to, re to consider using conservation funds to offset the city's expenses or the department's expenses in these cleanups. Uh, we had the recent request from from uh, the Conservation Commission regarding Lil the Lily Pond Conservation Area. And again, it's um, not out of the realm that the debris that we, you find, we find, is uh, do does have, in fact, needles and other things that are hazardous to deal with. And companies like ServPro are uh, capable of doing uh, those cleanups. They're, they're similar when uh, the police department, to some degree the fire department, but mostly police, when they deal with cleanups, or in some cases even in their patrol cars, they're using outside resources as well to clean up those vehicles. It's typically not done by city staff. Um, in your memo, I, I, uh, in the memo I gave Michelle Mears, there's some examples of, of uh, debris left behind. Some are more elaborate than others. Um, we also, in your packet, there should be a copy of a quote anyway for the cleanup from ServPro for this most recent uh, uh, situation that we've had behind the Cinnamon Ridge open space, Sunningdale open space. Uh, the totals uh, just a little over $2,000. And of that, about 1000 is a very large uh, encampment, which is uh, part of your packet, and you see quite a bit of material there, and we isolated that just due to the, you know, extensive nature of that. Um, and I, I think, again, the, the situation that we're facing, many communities are facing it as well, um, is the, the situation left from these encampments when folks move on, and we do not have the answers on that. And I, I know, and I'm not here tonight to, to debate that or discuss that, it's just, we respect the open space, and we, we want to make sure that it is, is kept up, certainly consistent with your goals and your objectives. The resources is challenged, at least operationally, and so therefore we're using outside resources. I'm requesting consideration of using um, the funds that are uh, allocated or made available to the Conservation Commission for um, this contracted cleanup uh, service. This cleanup, by the way, is pending. Um, it has, we have not engaged yet with ServPro. Um, able to open, or uh, able to answer questions uh, that you may have or additional information. Thanks, Mike. Um, I just want to uh, put it in some more context. Uh, so the Sunningdale easement is managed by the USDA, um, NRCS, uh, but the um, Conservation Commission is the uh, uh, agency that they interface with for the city. Um, the city, uh, you know, it's not designated who is responsible for keeping up the uh, the property. However, I would say in this case, since there's no other, um, you know, designated payee, that I think it's reasonable for for us to take this on. I would point out, though, that we have, um, you know, a static budget. It's not a budget. We have a static amount of uh, funds with some revolving fees um, that will come out of it. So it would be nice to have some other solution uh, for the long term. Something needs to be done for the short term, clearly. That's, that's my take on it. Yeah, and so, Mike, you mentioned that the same area, you guys have had to deal with multiple cleanups. Two others. Yeah, yeah. So just just to, what was the length of time in between those, do you think? I mean, if you can remember. Um, probably about a year, I would year say, if that's your question. So, yeah, I'm just trying to get a yeah. sense of yep. kind of like what the future holds for this, too. You know, if we, you know, it, it's going to get cleaned up now, and, you know, do we... 
I don't know, you know, step up monitoring more? Um, is there some kind of engagement with? Well, um, interesting enough, at least in the Sunningdale, Cinnamon Ridge area, we have um, an abutter who literally uh, walks the open space probably daily, mm -hmm. at least once a day, seven days a week almost. And that individual, and there's others as well that call in what they observe. Mm -hmm. And a recent uh, um, investigation on different uh, wetland issues that we had with the NRCS, uh, they actually appreciate that as well. Um, we sought funds from them for cleanup, and right now in their world, that's not a budgeted thing, or they, they don't have funds for that. They have funds for other things, but not for these kind of cleanups. Mm -hmm. Although maybe in the future, depending upon how, the, how frequently we have these cleanups, they may change that policy, but right now there's no funds. Their point, though, is they appreciate the visitors or the um, inspections or whatever informal, formal, either from, from this body or city staff or volunteers to report that, and they appreciate that so that it, at least it gets addressed in some formal manner. So the abutter is calling the city but not the police or there's uh, no in some cases that yes they're calling the police oh, as well yeah. or my office calls the police as well particularly to report the um, encampments yeah. uh, the, the, the trespass yeah definitely the police is out there quite a bit yeah. and fishing game and the trail bureau go out there fairly regularly they do so it's a I, I would say fairly regular um, visual okay. so yeah something like that that larger tent site could pop up pretty quickly I imagine then and it could be where you press in one spot and it pops back up in another week yeah sure and we've ex we've definitely experienced that yeah you know, we cleaned up uh, the Garabini property a couple of years ago and it's kind of moved around in different areas um, yeah yeah and so that two thousand dollar total is for all of these sort of satellites at this site it is yeah, yeah. Okay. The, we literally walk them I walk them with the contractor and uh, another uh, neighbor that was just out there with us and helped us identify those locations yeah. in fact along the way we discovered at least one very active encampment that we notified the police about So I, I'm in agreement with you, Scott. I mean, it seems like it's something that we should, you know, take care of. And then I, I, I don't know. I'd like to try to come up with a way that we can be in there more maybe. And I mean, I know we have a number of easements, but because I think, you know, this is something that's going to pop up in new areas and old areas. Um, so maybe we try to increase our surveys on our properties, the timing. Or bring it up with council as well. Alternative. Yeah. Oh, uh, that one does not. not but um, we certainly will have a it. it the the um, you know to the extent of timing when we engage this this contractor. If he's engaged in the open space at Sunnydale Cinnamon Ridge, um, if he does that other, I think the economies of scale will will be in our favor. And I would say that you're probably looking at probably that first that first uh, site charge from what I saw from your photos on Lily Pond. Yeah, probably under two hundred dollars is my guess. Yeah. There was one like small area of construction debris flagged by Dale and Sean in the That's report. That's the one you're referencing. Is yeah. that the one you're referencing? It, your microphone's not on, Doug. <clears throat> Is there more than that construction debris spot that got pulled out? Well, there were areas that looked like people were trying to grow stuff. They had. Oh, okay. Tubing and piping and oh, no raised kidding. beds and yeah. How I would leave it and how we've engaged this particular contractor is we literally go to the site and, and then he gives us a quote. Okay. He visually sees it. So I, I think I would leave it with you. I'd be glad to get back to you and the and the rest of the commissioners about what that price might be. Okay. Mike, was there a formalized uh, effort to um, 
clean up the Garabedian property, or was that just the volunteer? Uh, that was that, the, the event that happened a couple years ago, yeah. is that what you mean? Very well organized. I think it was a combination of law enforcement and some community volunteers and some other social service agencies. I don't have all the details about that. But um, yeah, I think I think it was definitely organized. But no budgeting from the city. There was the there was cleanup no of it was done privately, correct? You're yeah. thinking more of the um, the trespass piece. Yes, yeah. the having enforcing on some trespassing yep. was the group effort, and then cleanup was on the private property owner, correct? That's our understanding. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> So just to jump back to Lily Pond, uh, when I was in there, I'd never, I did not think of that as a campsite. I didn't see syringes or anything like that. So I just wonder if that's a, a different approach to cleaning that up, you know, that maybe we try to get some volunteers and drag stuff out and then maybe that's more accessible to city folks, city workers to pick up or something. Um, unless I missed areas, I oh, saw yeah. the grow, you know, what looked like a, you know, a grow operation and some right, yeah, yeah, barrels and things like that. I don't think, right. I don't like think that. it was an encampment. I yeah. think it's more kids or whatever trying to build something. I mean, there's siding in there, yeah. there's piping, tubing. Well, yeah. One of the things we're, we're constantly watching for when we get volunteers that offer to clean up a street or a park or anything is, in fact, the concern about needles. Mm -hmm. That's just a paramount. And, you know, we ask them to be uh, highly vig vigilant about that. Call, we, we have a process where uh, volunteers can call the police. Our employees call the police when they see that as well. We don't, we don't pick that up. My point is that potentially, while it may be construction debris, there there still could be some other debris in there. We just we just don't know, and we hate to, you know, have anybody uh, right. injured. Yeah, that's not a sustainable solution for volunteers to clean everything right. up. Right. And, and that's kind of what what we're we're looking at here, and and certainly we can work together um, with regard to future budgets. You know, with regard to these cleanups. Right now, it's not in our budget. It's just not, and uh, so. We're being asked, and the expectation, and, and we appreciate that expectation. It's just that, you know, I'd like to find a little more um, consistent way of responding to your request and to what we see. Yeah, uh, agreement with a lot of the points that have been raised here. We've got kind of a situation demanding a band aid right now with active junk on these properties. I think what we're seeing here is also a consequence of multiple years of Band-Aid solutions being applied to the unhoused populations in the area. Um, we've, we've had the warming shelter and the problems that have gone on at that site, and then these the, the populations will just migrate from site to site as they get trespassed off of one. There's no long-term sustainable solution that's been proposed out there to this. Um, so for the immediate concern I think it does make sense to pull some funds and, and help out because there hasn't been a long-term approach devised I am a little bit concerned about setting a precedent though because the Conservation Commission's funding comes from static inputs there's not a constant budgetary input to it and my suspicion is that without some sort of a council level approach that does resolve this on a larger level this will become an ongoing concern so if we're going to look at the Conservation Commission as a, an ongoing source of budgeting for this, we're going to need to start looking for an ongoing source of in input from the city. So for the immediate moment, I'm in support of dealing with this. It has to get done. We're a logical source. Longer term, it's something we need to discuss with council. Anyone uh, care to propose a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion. <coughs> To allocate two thousand and six dollars and twenty-five cents of commission funds for the open space uh, open space cleanup work, at the uh, Sunningdale property. How does how does that work? Two public works. Um, cleanup coordination through the public works department. But yeah, the public works through Mike will do the contract and things like that. He'll put in the purchase request order um, and then the invoice will go through Courtney 
and Courtney will work with finance, likely Barbara. Yep. Um, so Courtney will work with Barbara to charge the appropriate account, um, which will be the conservation fund. I will work with Courtney too to coordinate to get her copies or Bar Courtney and Barbara to make sure that they have the appropriate documentation to be able to spend out of the conservation fund. Right. And as indicated, uh, the department will supervise the, the work. I mean, it's, it'll be supervised by public works. All right. Thanks for doing the legwork with yeah. us, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate your and just one, just one last question. So th this, this 2006, that's set. The, I, so I'm just worried if the camps are still, if they're active, there's maybe potential growth and then. They are, I would say. Um, you know, again, it's a, it's a big problem, but um, the, the one camp that we saw that we did report, I will just say it was organized. Uh, was not litter filled, if you will, and I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so, and I don't even know if this is possible, but can can you just buffer that amount by a couple hundred dollars in case there is a bigger estimate instead of having to come back and ask mm -hmm. again? I don't know the the ins and outs of this, so you can frame it in a motion. You guys can, yeah. Uh, okay. Do you want to? Uh, um, yeah, I'll just amend my existing motion and then just kind of leave it open-ended on the amount. Plus or minus like what, 200? Yeah, like 300 bucks or something because this is the way this is broken out. I mean. Just so something to the effect of to spend no more than $2,300 of the conservation fund. Perfect. For the efforts of cleaning up the Sunningdale, working with Surfro. Works for me. That's your motion? That's my motion, yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion, is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. Motion carries. When you're ready, we'll do public comment. Yes? Uh, <clears throat> public comment. Is there any comment from the public other than um, comment on uh, the application on the agenda? Yes. Come on, please. Thank you, Ralph Losey, uh, townhouses at Green Ridge. I was here a couple of months ago speaking to you about the pond in our, in, on our property. And as I said at the time, we're just looking for some direction as to what we can or can't do to maintain. Um, the, uh, I think the picture that I showed you at the time, if you even remember, everything was pretty low growing now that we've had rain and the season is going on. The reeds are all up around the pond, uh, a good four feet anyhow, to the point where if from certain directions looking at the pond, you can just see a sliver of it at this point. Um, I did uh, go out and uh, kind of from an overhead shot and walk the property. So uh, one of you at the time had mentioned, you know, something about less than 50% or 50% or whatever. And I drew a line from one build the last building over here to the last building over here and it I didn't measure it exactly but it is less than 50 percent that we're even looking to maintain the whole back side of it we're not looking to do anything to it all just that front piece and as I said before we're not looking to rip all of this out uh, we're very happy with you know the the idea of the way it looks and whatever we just like to be able to maintain it for the safety reasons that I mentioned and for the aesthetic reasons of being able to have a nice pond that we can actually see uh, for the rest of the season. Okay, now this is not on the agenda, so we can't uh, decide on anything tonight, but I did go out and take a look at it and um, it, it didn't look like there were any reeds uh, longer than uh, three feet or so and not more than a couple feet out from the pond and I could see in the water clearly. Um, if there were a kid in there on a bike, I would know it. Um, this was, the, uh, the pond was uh, mitigation for wetlands mm -hmm. uh, disturbance. And um, there were plantings done uh, expressly for that. Um, and I've got, I, I went back and looked at the plan. Um, and to be honest, it looks thinner than what was intended um so um, we can put you on the agenda um and um you know talk about it formally but 
just letting you know what I saw. Okay. I mean, if you're, uh, as I said last time, if, if this is something that you feel that we just can't do at all, then, you know, we'll obviously live with it. Uh, that's just the way it is, you know. Um, but uh, and you're, you're welcome back. Yeah, and, and if you were out there recently, yes, it, it, it's not, it, it's been growing, um, but the incident that we had last year was much later in the season. Uh, kids are not even out from school yet. Uh, and and it was considerably thicker and higher at the end of the season. That's that's all I can tell you about that. But yeah, it was intended to get higher than that. Um, it, it could get up to I don't know six feet. Um, I don't anticipate that it will anytime soon. But that was part of the plan. Okay. All right. So what what would be the next step for me to take at this point? to uh, contact the planning office and, and uh, get on the agenda for next month. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for your time. Yep. Is there any other public comment? There being none, the next item is conditional use permits. When you're ready, sorry. Uh, Russell Amacor is seeking a conditional use permit to fill and grade property within the riparian wetland buffer on a property located at 59 Milo Lane in the residential single family R1 district assessor's map 69 lot 2D9 CUP 1 2024. Welcome. Doing? Thank you. Russell Amaconi. I'm sorry? Amaconi is last name. Okay. Thank you. No worries. It, <clears throat> is that misspelled on the agenda? I don't know. How is it spelled? A M I C O R E. N E. N E. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so if you will present, um, there was um, some uh, public correspondence. Um, we'll let you talking in, in your in entirety about the issue and then um, I'll read that email and then we can you know, the, the Commission can ask you questions and we can okay discuss it. Um, basically recently moved to the neighborhood and um, my backyard to the right of the house is a fence and there's a waterway where the water runs off in the rain it's eroding the dirt away from the fence, so any windy day, the fence is starting to fall down because the posts are getting loose. There's not enough dirt holding up the posts. Um, at the time, I hired a contractor to bring some dirt, and I wasn't aware that I needed a permit to bring in dirt because I was unaware that the buffering was up against wetlands. So I was told to stop. And my concerns are I want to build up the dirt enough and put some plantings that are suitable for wetlands to hold the dirt from eroding away. So the posts aren't constantly getting loose. They're, they're all loose right now. It's, it didn't happen overnight, but prior to the people knowing the house, it's been happening for a while. So now the valley part to the right side of my house is a lot wider than it used to be because the dirt is just eroding away. And it's almost up to my fence now, to where, uh, like I said, on a windy day, sections of the fence just fall down from the wind because the posts aren't sturdy enough to hold the fence up. So my concern was to make it safer to add fill, loom, seed on the right side and across the front where the pipe is, to make it easier to maintain, keep it safer. And uh, again, I wasn't aware there was a permanent bob, so I did take the necessary steps to maintain um, what needed for me to do it properly, and I'm here now. Um, I'll, I guess we'll reserve our questions for, for after the, uh, the email. Would you like to read that? Or? I can read it if you'd like. It's addressed, it's addressed to do you want, do you have the paper one? I can give it to you. Um, yes. 
Okay. So, um, I did speak with, it's the property located at, and I apologize, I don't actually know his address. Oh, 53 Milo. So it's the house adjacent to the subject lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's, his name is Jason, and I apologize, I'm going to miss say his last name, Lamphier. Um, he said, hello all, I have several concerns and or comments for the commission regarding the conditional use application as I am the adjacent homeowner next to the water drainage ditch slash swale. Um, Mr. Amnicor, Am sorry, Amnic Amnicorny. Coney, okay. I apologize, he spelled it wrong because we spelled it wrong. Okay. Um, states he wants to extend the 12 um, inch water runoff pipe approximately 70 feet from his driveway culvert to the side of the drainage ditch. Doing this will create a direct flow of potentially heavy runoff into the ditch with no opportunity for the land to absorb the water as, it is, the, as is the current setup throughout the entire development. Doing what he proposed could overwhelm the drainage swale as was originally designed right here, and potentially cause flooding issues on my property. I get rain runoff into the drainage area from both sides of the street, uphill, and horizontally from the the opposite direction, all funneling through the concrete culvert underneath the main road. There is also a primary transformer that sits low in the ditch across the street from me that is prone to water rise directly related to the entire drainage system. Um, the applicant states the primary justification for the application is to be safe next to the rain water runoff and stop the dirt from eroding outside the fence. That fence was installed by the previous owner approximately three to four years ago and was prone to breaking apart during heavy winds from day one, including the other portions of the fence on the opposite side of the property, not near the drainage area. The applicant wants to backfill grade and level with loam and seed and at a later date after the ground settles and grass mo grows to move the fence widening the backyard approximately 20 feet. How much fill and loam will be needed to bring that entire length of land up to an eye, to an even level? As of now, it is sloped down to the ditch swale area, corresponding to his backyard angle, as was originally designed for the purposes of proper drainage away from his property, I assume. I'm concerned that adding the amount of fill and loam necessary to raise that side of his property up may very well collapse or become compromised during extreme rainfall during or even well after construction unless a retaining wall or bulkhead is built to hold that material in place as it would become very steep angle on this ditch side. A heavy rainfall could potentially cause flooding on my property including back into my garage as my driveway sits at a low spot along the drainage area if some of that backfill were to block any of that area. And again that's from Jason at 53 Milo Lane and Jeremy I did email you a copy. So, um, <clears throat> comment on that, while I uh, respect the, um, the concerns of the, um, the neighbor, I think that's probably uh, an issue. The drainage is an issue for the planning board um, and not within our purview. Um, we, we're here to talk about um, incursions in the wetland buffer um, and, the, and the health of the wetland. So, <clears throat> you know, I, we don't have to speak to the, the culvert and the, and the transformer and the, and the drainage unless it's draining into the, the buffer. So, if I may interrupt, so the pipe in the front of my yard, in the front of my house, is so blocked up with dirt, it barely has any dirt water coming through it now. And whatever comes out just has a little puddle there's a little puddle that sits right in front of the pipe because I cleared the front of it away, not realizing there was the pipe there. And that's why, you know, because for what comes out of there, you won't even see it. And the amount that comes out of the pipe is minimal unless you're going to have a torrential downpour and massive flooding. No pipe can sustain anything, you know, no dirt. It's just to make it safer and easier to maintain because, like I said, there's just a dip in the front of our yard on the front lawn. If I had a long travel, I wouldn't even be here right now. 
but it's just a short run down and up. It's just a little, a little difficult. And the same thing with in the back. We're talking, his concerns are past his garage, past his house, where the fence is, where I want to build up the dirt. I'm not even bringing the dirt all the way to the front. It's just in the side of the fence where it's eroding. And in the front, like I said, I'm going to use the same pipe. No pipe ever fills up 100%. It's a 12-inch corrugator pipe. No pipe. I've never seen it. And whatever flows through there, by the time it comes down, it's minimal. It's not even massive. I um, want to just save you some, some headache. Um, yes. So, so that you know that you... Um, whether you convince us or not, it's it's not our decision. I understand. So that, that's got to go to the planning board. But we we do need to talk about um, the fill um, or any disturbance within the wetland buffer. Um, so um, I'm just looking at the photos and um, trying to put the erosion into context. If I look at photo one, do you have? I didn't bring it with him, sorry. Can... Okay. So and here. You can't see now. I we wreck all this. This right now, this is where the trough is and where the water runs down. It used to was up further last year. It's so photo for, for everyone, everyone else, photo one was taken from the perspective facing the street? Correct. Okay. So this area here, this area right here, that's the first back of my house. Right here is where the water is flat and runs up to the fence. So this right now, you can hear the posts are shaking. They're, they're loose and they're in cement. My concern is they're going to fall down eventually. So the amount of buildup of dirt that's along this fence um, doesn't have enough to support the fence to hold it up anymore. So it's not going to fall down tomorrow, but so if that's if that's covered with ground cover, how do we know that it's erosion and that the fence wasn't just planted or uh, installed right at the edge? We don't know. We don't know. But if you if you walk down this, mm -hmm. I weed whack probably halfway. You can walk into the trough, whatever the first terminology is, but it's a small angle going up. I want to build yep. this up here, keeping that from flopping and put some vegetation that's made for wetland so it'll hold the dirt in place. We put a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, I first came and introduced myself to Dan, and I did enough to town. We'll put some kind of piping in. So then that water has passed that. Yep. And there was no. There was no. There, does the city still have the plan for that plot? Yes, we have the full subdivision plan. It'd, it'd be nice to see the original contours there. Because if, if they that sh should be on that plan I gave. Uh, current contours. Um. Oh, you want current contours? Original. Original, um, the two copies that I made you, those other two sheets, the one that's not as um, poorly copied should show you what the grade, the contours are. Okay, thank you. So if the pipe that's on the street side, which is concrete, gets extended back toward the wetland, it will, it will eliminate everything. It won't have any more erosion. You won't have any more runoff. And even the pipe that comes across the front of my yard, if you run it down into that and put a T, it'll all run back. So it's only rainwater, it's not city water, it's just whenever it rains. Um, do, do we have a plan showing the placement of the house in the actual subdivision? Mm, just the septic. So the septic's the one that's going to show you where the house and there's a foundation certification, but it doesn't have grades on it. Um, yeah, that would probably give you the best. And I don't remember if I could look. there are some grades on that septic plan. I did. So I Norway Plains plan. Correct. Yes. 
I'm, I'm having a little bit of a problem following with some of the pictures, and I think I have it placed out, but, but your, your contention is that erosion is being caused from water running from the street right. parallel to your house, Correct. not erosion coming off of your yard in the back. Probably a combination of both, mm -hmm. but because the water is forced toward me, toward the wetlands, yep. it's stronger coming that direction than mine, to my side of the fence. So that's a drainage easement. Who manages that? And if, like, I mean, so, it, I mean, if that's the case, I mean, so you want to, you'd, you'd want to put a pipe in. But even with that, so you, you would push out, wouldn't you just be pushing the problem further out in towards the road? No, you're going away from the road. You're going through the back of my yard. You're, well, in this diagram where you have the fence, sort of etched in is that not going so this is this is my septic yep what i'm concerned about is on this side you're over here right so this pushing right so this basically is the trough and the pipe ends here by the street so if you extend this pipe from the street back toward the wetlands or back toward the wetlands <clears throat> so on this here this is the trough area yeah, okay. Yeah, so I was looking at that incorrectly. Um, because my property line falls from the front right corner, 46 feet, in, past the center of the trough. And it's one three quarters past the center of the trough. And I was hoping to get assistance from the city to extend that pipe further back so. They won't be flooding with the neighbor's house with the garage. And there won't be flooding and more erosion because now the water is not being directed back. Mm -hmm. The street acceptance indicates just the street. I think there is some maintenance for drainage at by this at the public works level. Um to not the culverts, just the swales. So not the private driveway culverts, the ones that go through the road. Right, under the road. We maintain. Yes, Mike, please. <laughs> the city, the Department of Public Works, maintains just the street itself. And in this case, the street does not have curbs, so it's got the swales. While Property owners have helped considerably with mowing and you know maintaining that. Technically, that is part of the drainage of the street. What we do not maintain, sometimes that does get confused, confusing, but we do not maintain the culvert underneath the driveway. So we, that's not a, a function or a task that Public Works has done on any street, uh, any accepted street in the city. We, we see that as part of the driveway and the property as well. So and the easement going into, you know, between the lots or on the on the lots, that's normally maintained by the HOA or um, it can be. It does it does vary. We've seen it in different ways, but yes, generally that's right. The the easements um, can be maintained or have been maintained by HOA. The agreement will spell that out, or the HOA agreements would spell that out. Um, we do maintain culverts underneath streets that go from point A to point B, so that's a distinction. We have culverts in different parts of the city, so those are those are our responsibilities. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. So it'd be nice to find out who's responsible for maintaining that drainage easement. If, uh, if we could find out, we've got verbiage here from. Uh, the, the builder um, but I would think that that's been transferred since then I, I would doubt the builder is still maintaining the drainage easement all right so clarifying the drainage easement area would be helpful for you guys for, for making part of your recommendation of impacts for this I would think so because if the if the um, culvert is partially blocked and the and or the um, the swale isn't working as designed. Um, 
we should get someone to see how, how it has deviated from the initial construction. Get it back to that state before we talk about solutions. The other thing that I'm having a little bit of trouble following here is our purview comes in when you start looking at doing something within the wetland buffer. And it looks like this fence is partially within the wetland buffer, partially outside of it, that we have a culvert pipe that extends out to some point on the fence, not necessarily inside the buffer. Um, so in order for us to make a recommendation to the planning board, we would need to know what work you're proposing that falls inside the wetland buffer what you'd be asking us to recommend to them for that component of it. So how much culvert are you looking to extend out into the wetland buffer? Where would it terminate? What are you looking to do with the outlet of that culvert? Is that inside a wetland, inside a buffer? And what are you looking to do for soil work um, within that buffer space and to what extent? Um, it sounds like the current level you're looking to raise by about two and a half feet roughly maybe a little less <coughs> just to grade it <coughs> and how significant of a grade um, <coughs> down or up where well, is that looking to land so where the where the flash spot is in the buffer you roughly i'm going to say if i had to guess two sections of fence out from there up and then gray right to the fence so it's not going to be built up two and a half feet Two and a half feet of the fence just to be up enough to the fence, and then I want some plants to hold the dirt from being washed away again. Okay. But if the pipe that comes under the street is extended back past the fence, all our problems that are eroding on either side will be gone. Now the water is being directed further out in the wetland in the back because the back of my yard is over an acre, it's all wetlands. And the water runs there and stops. It just sits there and just goes back as far as it can go. So what we would need to know in order for us to make a solid recommendation is what exactly you're proposing. I'm having a hard time understanding that from what we have in front of us right now. Um, I would recommend holding off on trying to figure all that, out, all the logistics out until you find out who's responsible for maintaining it. and and um, what the uh, the initial um, contours were, and, you know how how that's going to be resolved, the the drainage proper, you know to clear the culvert, whatever other work needs to be done to get it back functioning, then then it makes sense to me to go back in and you know beyond the the work that was done to restore that, what else do you see? still needs to be done to you know to get this um, in, a, in a stable state so my my concerns were again from the front of the house extending that pipe down into that if the town would assist me in extending the pipe that comes out under the street and putting a Y there then the pipe can be directed straight back That'll, that'll solve all the problems because it seems like my area of the house is the only one with a wide runoff. I drove around the neighborhood and it doesn't seem like anyone else has that problem. The, um, the outstanding question is who's responsible for the, the easement? Um, it, it, you know, it's a legal issue basically. Right. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to find out myself. Yeah. That part wasn't included. So the part that you included in the application, the Culvert, that was the one on the your frontage, though, correct. Correct? correct? You hadn't, you had, last time we talked when you submitted your application, you had pulled back on the idea of doing modifications to the easement. So at this point, you're looking to have something included? Yes. Okay. And I've got one thing, too. Yeah. <clears throat> if this pipe's only being extended 70 feet from that culvert underneath Milo Lane. That one's... So what oh, this. Is his gotcha. Okay, never mind then. And that's why I was asking okay. the city Sorry. to help me with the 
trough, if that's a pronunciation, just to extend the, the rainwater that runs off. Going back toward the back of my property, I don't really bother with that. My maintain is the backyard, the front lawn, the side, and the rest is just grows whatever it grows. Yeah. You know, we, the, the commission uh, has worked with property owners to uh, come up with solutions that are amenable to the wetlands and to property. Right. Um, so that's that's something that we're, we're definitely here to discuss. Um, we just have a gap in the in the paperwork here to figure out, fill in the dots on right. what was supposed to be there and who's. Is there any chance someone can come out and meet me at the house so I can get a, a real view of what we're looking at? We can do a site walk. Um, I'm, all, I'm okay with open with that any, any time. I work locally in town, so I'm five minutes away. Yeah, um, we can do that, you know, when we come to revisit it. Um, but I think first we need to nail down uh, what's well, you know, what it's supposed to look like to get it functioning right. Okay. That's fine. Okay, I, I think I need a clarification, too, and I think it might be the same th question that Jeremy had. Yes. The 70 feet of pipe you want to put in, that is extending from the outlet under your driveway down to? Yes. The junction. I mean, I did a tape measure roughly. It's yeah, 70 no, feet, 68 fine. feet, just, you know, I, um, just to just to reach that point. But if I had to dig down in the front to to set the the plastic mm -hmm. PVC pipe for every three feet, I think you drop a quarter inch. It probably won't be 70 feet; it'd be less. Yeah. Because that's just laying on top. It may be, it may be 60 feet. You know. What I'm right. Saying? And all that work would be outside of the buffer. Yes. Which, yes. Yes. And then that would intersect with the uh, the concrete culvert that comes across the street. Yes. Into a T or a split Y or whatever Which you want to call would, it. I think personally, I think it would resolve everything. So there would be no build up and Jason doesn't have to worry about the water filling up and running through his garage. I mean, I've never seen it ever full, ever, yeah. ever. And I'm like I said, my wife and son moved in last year. I moved there in January. Over the winter, even with the snow melting, it never filled up past a couple of feet. And that's at least five or six feet down on the street side. But going towards the back, it's not so deep. Probably two feet. It looks like we're looking at two different issues. I think that was said. One is what we are just talking about, which doesn't fall under our purview. And then the other is the fence and the extension of the land there yeah well how far does the easement project into the property I think it, I think it extends past the fence oh yeah yeah past the so fence yeah we still need to oh, yeah. figure that out quite a bit and there's enough room for the pipe to extend back into there where it runs anyway and it won't form anything because it's like I said it's just rainwater there's no sewer water, nothing like that. It's just rainwater coming down. So the CUP is it submitted. I'm not sure it's really applicable because what we're talking about here is the culvert, the drainage work. That's all in the front yard. That's not anywhere near. The, the buffer space, mm -hmm. so that's not within our our view here. Correct. Um, the second piece on here, the backyard fence, right side backfill grade and level with loam and seed, might be depending on where you're actually looking to fill, but I don't think we can really tell that from what's been submitted at this point. And then um, the plantings and, and seed for anything that was going on inside the buffer, we would have a discussion about but um, which I have a listening for what I would plant yeah. what we would need to know really is what if this work is actually happening inside the buffer what isn't and I don't think we can tell that from what's here so I think you would need to 
clean up the CUP application to, to focus on what's going on inside the buffer space because that's what we need to talk about here. Mm -hmm. um, and then come back with, with that in place and then we can address any issues that might be there. Um, but this the CUP as it, it currently is structured doesn't make clear where work's going on inside the buffer and where isn't. So you want me to clean up the buffer again? Uh, I, I think we need you to clean up the CUP to really make clear what you want to do inside the buffer before you do anything there. I don't know what that means. Oh, the conditional use permit, the uh, the application okay. that you, you filed here. Um, because there's there's work in here, the, the drainage work in the front yard that isn't inside the buffer space and isn't inside our our control or our, okay. our discussion. Um, you would need to discuss that likely with public works since it sounds like that intersects with a drainage easement that they hold. And then the work that you want to do inside the buffer space, you would need to come back to us with to discuss that. Yeah. And, and there's what I'm seeing is that there's a potential that the solution for the drainage in the front may extend out into the buffer. Right. So that's where we need to figure out, you know, depending on what needs to be done to restore the proper drainage. We just don't know um, what's being proposed, mm -hmm. you know, because you need an engineer basically to, to go out and say, here's what, how it should look. And then once we know how it should look, then we can entertain, you know, how to implement it. I mean, you're, you're clearly trying to do the right thing and not do work in areas that you're not supposed to. I just don't think we know what that is at this point. And you would need to get some assistance with that. So do I go to the public works and speak to them first and see, explain to them what I'm looking to do so I understand? I think there's two different kind of items moving along from based off of what Jeremy's and what the board's talking about. The drainage is something that you, your front drainage, Right. that's something you would want to talk to public works specs. It's not in the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. It's not in the wetland buffer right. area. And then they need more detailed plans of what the work within the buffer is. They meaning who? They is this board. Oh. To make a recommendation to the planning board, they need to have a clear, concise understanding of what work is being done within the buffer, mm -hmm. what that's going to look like for impacts, if I'm understanding the commission's comments correctly. So the pipe in the front will be underground. It won't be visible. So that's a conversation that you'll have with Public Works. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that has to be dug down because, like I said, the front lawn comes down and it drops. So I would just bury that to meet the pipe that's already there and extend it into the area. Right. So you'll talk that through with Public Works. So Public Works is over here. 18 Lilac Lane. Okay. On the police station. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, and then working on a plan, like a more clear, with more details about what is going to be w in the what buffer. What they would propose or allow. For your, yeah, so your, that 100 foot buffer area that's right. a portion of your fence is within. Right. Um, I think it splits about half based off of what we've been able to estimate. Mm -hmm. So that portion of the fence that's within the buffer, we're looking for more details of how, what grade changes you're doing there, um, how much fill you're going to be adding, what the final grade is going to be. I don't know if there's anything else from the commission. How do you maintain that uh, information about the easement? Would that be deeds or? We can pull, we can, I can discuss it with Director Mears and um, figure out what we have on records and try to figure out for that easement that's between the two properties that the one that we got the comment from and his property for the treatment of the road. Um, I think that would accelerate the conversation, you know, it would smooth things out very nicely. I think too, if you are proposing work within that, we need to know, and that needs to be indicated on the application because right now that this application does not indicate work within the treatment swale. It's just for the filling. Well, it's just for the back end, not the front end. Before it was just gonna, the water was just going to run into that and keep going. 
Right. So if you want to propose modifications to that treatment swale, right now we don't have anything no, indicated on the application. So we would want something indicated on so that I have application. Go to the public works, talk to them about what I would like to have done or do. In the front. Yep. The front part by the street side. Okay. All right. Is it a question? Uh, yes. I believe you said the fence was put in by the previous owner? Yes. How long ago was that? It was there when they moved in. The that email said two to three years or something like that. that we could find the building permit, I believe. Okay, wouldn't that have required a, a CUP? No, fences are exempt. They are exempt. Yep. And does it go into the wetland buffer? Yes. Huh. Yep. So it, it's, it, it's a mess. I, I it's apologize puzzling for this. that a fence is exempt, but dirt isn't. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've just been that dirt. I wasn't building anything on it. Just adding dirt so it doesn't keep washing away. <laughs> Just, I don't. It is what it is. No, I know. <laughs> All right. I have no more questions unless anyone else. No, uh, we do need a motion, though, on what to do with the application. Um, table it, I guess. Yeah, it sounds like it would be a. a table to a given date or um, or maybe the applicant would like to withdraw for now or we we hold on to the app application or i mean i'll go there tomorrow you see. can you can there doesn't need a date specific um we you because it's not a public hearing so there's no abutters notice with this it's just a general agenda notice so you could continue it to allow the applicant to get the items and then you could specify what items you're looking for and then once he's able to return that information depending on when he's able to get it to us we will schedule it on the next available agenda okay um whether that's july or whatnot so i'll make a motion that we table the application um to allow the applicant time to uh, discuss issues with dpw and develop a more um, complete plan of work when inside the buffer space um to uh, a, a date at the applicant's convenience prior to work uh, I would just probably change that from table to continue or continue yes I'll second that yeah, there's a motion and a second to continue the application any more discussion all in favor aye all opposed passes uh, we'll see you again all right thank you okay. thank you for your patience all right thank you I'll email you if I have information that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Item four is new business. Is there any new business to come before the commission? Nope, just Mike's thing. Um, item five, old business. A, review of the recommended native tree, tree list proposed revisions. Tree Ordinance Chapter 33, and um, some screenshots were included in the packet, I believe. I don't think so. I, there was, I think the, those are a bit out of date from what we worked off of. There was something attached to the minutes. Maybe that was it from the... I saw, the and I, but I'm not actually sure what... The minutes. <clears throat> oh. oh yeah, hiding in there. So in April, K Dodds notes there are exotics on the list and recommends their removal. The commission discussed a periodic five-year assessment. K Dodds will forward an edited list. See attachment. The commission will also look to modify the recommended planting list, including included in the planting, excuse me, planning system. So um, actions were is that yours, Kevin? You know, I can take you through what I did, if that'll be helpful for so since April. Correct, yeah. because um, I wasn't going to be able to make the last meeting because I was in chainsaw training. So I sent you the edited list. Oh, and I dropped it. 
I don't know. <laughs> but so the list that's included in in the um, in the packet was you know something that I was just working off of while we discussed some things. I took some notes. I then went individually through the tree species, um, removing anything that was uh, non-native, but then also anything that was sort of so far out of the range that you wouldn't really focus on that right now as assisted migration. A, a tree species, you know, there were some that had a very limited distribution in, say, Georgia, you know, and maybe it would make it up here, but, you know, is that something that we really want to have on a list to suggest to folks? So um, I took all of those out. I left you know, anything that was kind of southern New Englandy in terms of distribution that may not be here yet. Uh, there was a few species that were a little bit more south from there. And so that was the approach. And I got rid of some, you know, some trees that had, um, or I removed some trees that had potential pest problems. Uh, and then there, I have a, so I think we can just share this with everybody after the meeting too. But some of the hybrids that I just don't know about, you know, like that some of the, they're not hybrids, but the crosses um, that I'm not sure we need them, but maybe there's a benefit to them over others. But so this is pared down considerably with Southern species removed, Western species removed, exotic species removed. Um, and it's still, I think, you know, a pretty strong list uh, of, of native trees that you know somebody can consider planting in different situations. Yeah, thank you. Um, you've got some comments in here that I can circle back on so we exhaust the uh, comments. Um, I sent out um, a link for the USDA's, uh, I'm sorry, the Forest Service's um, climate change, tr is it tree migration? Tree, at tree Atlas. Tree, tree Atlas. Atlas, yeah. Um, wondering whether we should refer to that at all within this document, um, but I, I think you know the work that you did um, takes that into consideration. Basically, <laughs> the issue is that the trees trees will have trouble keeping up you know, with with the speed of um, uh, temperature increase. Um, your trees are, are where they migrate 350 feet every 100 years, something like that, as opposed to um, having to uh, ratchet that up to four to five miles. So any assisted migration would, would help with that. And basically taking trees that are more adapted to warmer climates, um, proven to to su succeed in warmer climates with caveat, you know, in this type of hab habitat with this type of moisture and all that stuff. Anyway, the, the, uh, the idea is for humans to um, augment that migration process so that we have successful trees here when, you know, when our regular trees have died. Uh, Would it make sense to pull Kevin's list into the next meeting and potentially vote on an acceptance there? Yeah, and just for context too, um, some of the discussion from when we first had these two lists, what was this assisted migration, removing exotics? I think, Jeremy, we, we talked about, it may have even come from you, like a five-year reevaluation of the tree list, which I think is a great idea. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it's... Assisted migration is a weird one, right? If things start moving that fast, are we going to be a society that can, <laughs> is going to be the place to worry about their forests um, and their urban forests especially? But so I think maybe however we want to handle this, I mean, th this, is a, this is a list that I think is bigger than the tree board list. You know, it's somewhere in between the list that came from, I think, Shane or, um, yeah. And that you know the, the 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 tree board list. So we you know we've added some species that that folks can consider that I think is biologically defensible at this moment. 
you know, and then if we want to reevaluate it in five years, I think that makes sense, you know. And have you removed anything that's going to struggle in the future, like cedar or? I, I mean, there's, <laughs> I mean, you're kind of asking the wrong person, right? Because I, I can see that's, a problem with, did. I mean, I can see a problem that a lot of these trees are going to have in the future, yeah. probably. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure that's a, I'm not sure that we want to look, look at them that way, right. unless there's something really obvious, you know, like I took out uh, American elm, you know, even though there's been selective breeding for resistance, it's still not resistant. And when it, and if there's more stress on those trees, they're going to be even less resistant. So, so it was sort of incorporated in that. Yeah. Um, did you remove anything with an eye to um, what, you know, heavy snow damage? I did not get into like structure or anything like that, whether like snapping potential or anything. No. And that would be a lot of work to okay. go through the tree list and do That's that. Good. It's doable. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure there that information's out there and other for other towns, but I did not do that. So that was probably more than we can get to. I'm just looking yeah. around from, from this past, um, was it spring when we had that heavy snow and uh, we had so many snap pines? For sure. Yeah. I mean, just trying to see if paper birch stayed on here. That always snaps. I think I did remove that for pest reasons, but um, yeah. So I I don't know what this next step is. I mean, the next step, I guess, is really for everybody to see this list because you haven't seen this one yet. The the modified um, the modified yeah, list. I think, yeah, that's prudent. So you'll send the one with the markups. Yeah, I'll send. I had a clean version and a marked up version. I'll I'll look at them and send either both of them or the one that makes the most sense. I think I, I think I left the comments in for you, Scott, because I was I wanted you to be able to talk about it if I wasn't here of why some of the decisions were. Yeah, um, I think those would be valuable for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Great. Thanks for the work. So, um, <clears throat> we do not need a motion for that. We'll just continue to work on it. you want I can send that out yeah sure if you have it up and ready and that's great all right I'll do that Next item is B, easement monitoring. <clears throat> we really need to um, take a look at that. If we we need someone to um, take the helm on it and start checking off properties that have been done that still need to be done, and you know, doling out. Um, relevant papers for for them <clears throat> um, I can't I, I can't tell anyone you know hey step it up because I haven't <laughs> had time to do it either so um, if and when you have time just um, just let me know and I'll how many of those are there? I mean, I know that I, I created a map, but I'm not sure I had everything, and it was like 18 or... 27, I think. Okay, so maybe I didn't have everything then. Um, I mean, just based on the discussion earlier, I, we need to be in these probably more often than... What is it now, one, annually, one time a year? Yeah, that we'll struggle to do that more than once a year. Yeah, well, and I don't think all 27 would yeah. need to be visited, but we could look at risk, you know, and proximity to areas, but, um, 
yeah, I think it would be a good place, good place to start of just having them, and maybe we have that, and I don't, or I, you know, to have a list and really maybe try to schedule it out or partition it because <clears throat> I mean, this kind of this is the conversation each yeah. month. Um, yeah, uh, we could set something, a regular schedule, and um, just assign uh, easements. Do whatever time. Do we have to do like uh, the, um, oh, let the neighbors know that we're coming in or anything like that? Or I mean, it's just Depends. okay. So some do because they have to pass through or something. You need to yeah. Let the let the owners know. Um, <clears throat> depending on who holds the, the easement or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just popping in on some of them. Is what I was getting at. And um, we can't have we have a quorum. Then we'll need to post the um, interject report first. <clears throat> so gotta make sure that we don't have more than three people. Yeah. Okay. Yep, we have we have it. Yep. Yeah, that's what we had in place before uh, Sarah resigned. She was handling that. Yeah, I have it. Um, the planning office has it. Um, it's just a matter of somebody taking the reins. I did send around the, <clears throat> I made that uh, in Gaia, the app, the mapping app, I made the, of all the data that I had, I made an overlay of the parcels, but I never heard back from anybody, so I don't know if it was, it was accessible to me, and then when I dummied into the app, I could see it, but I don't, I don't know if everybody else was able to use it or not. Was that an email? It was an email attachment, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yep. So I can, you know, resend it. I think I have to share it. it um, I'll have to go back and look, but yeah, I can send it out again. Appreciate it and uh, apologize that you have to do it again. Do you have. So you'd have to download. Uh, you'd have to. I think you'd have to have Gaia, but you might be able to use it with um, Google Earth on your phone. You could definitely use it with Avenza, but uh, some of the freer ones, the more free. So I'll send it out, but really I need people to try to open it. And then if it doesn't work, I, I can then troubleshoot it. So, um, so we'll do that. So regarding uh, formalizing a, a regular schedule, is that workable for anyone or everyone? You mean in terms of like taking on some sites? Yeah, saying yeah. Uh, you know twice a month or something like that mm -hmm. on a weekend. I mean, it, it's it's tricky. I know everybody's got plans. Yeah, I mean, like it's easy for uh, it's easy for me to pop into some place <laughs> at a random time, as it is probably for all of us more so than a scheduled time. Um, 
Is there any type of rule that you, more than one person has to go or anything like that? For st- no, I, I recommend rule of thumb to have two people at least yeah. uh, just for safety. Yeah. I have some extra orange hats if anybody wants them from the... I have one for you. Um, the Conservation Commission purchased orange hats for easement monitoring. So if you are going to go out there and you don't have one, I have a couple extra in my office that Michelle gave me that I was have been supposed to be bringing to the meeting. Uh, so, but if you don't have one and you want one to do easement monitoring, uh, join me on a trip to my office after the meeting. All right. Were you, were you done talking or? Yeah, I'm done talking. <laughs> Felt like you, were, you, were, you know, you had an unfinished uh, thought there. So yeah, it's easier to to do it on the spur of the moment. However, you know, I, I'm hearing that we're kind of behind the, uh, the the eight ball here and should formalize something. Hearing both things. Um, Should we just, you know, uh, I go on pager duty, and we share it with it with other engineers. So every I don't know seventh week or something like that, I, I'm on the hook. But we want to do something like that, uh, so that you know in advance that you that you're supposed to uh, monitor an, an easement, or is that too aggressive? I mean, I I don't. I don't mind having a schedule, you know, that that easement A, B, and C need to be done by October or by, you know, so it would just be partitioning out that list. Um, I also don't mind managing that, just not right now. <laughs> you know, like, you, like you, if we get through Mallee Farm, you. then I, I'm, I'm comfortable taking something like that on. But so, you know, or if we have others join or whatever, but... It, it does it does really benefit from having one person manage it and then because that that's I think we all benefit it from Sarah right like she just would send Absolutely, out an email and say hey can is anybody free and you could pair up so, so that doesn't help right now well, I, can, um, I can take that part on for now to do the scheduling I just wanted to know whether yeah. anyone will be affronted if they see their name on a on a date mm. um, Okay. I'll do it. Yeah, it's fine with me. I filter out all of Scott's emails right to the trash <laughs> anyways, so you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, until I ask him about them. <laughs> it's actually the other way around. <laughs> Great. Thanks for all the input. Um, any correspondence regarding old business? Um, I don't think so. Adam D, member items, subcommittee items, and reports. One, wildlife management plan for Lily Pond parcel. Nothing on that. Uh, two, Invasives plan. Actually, there is something on that. Um, we did apply for that um, assistance from the Cooperative Extension for um, a management plan for for Mallee Farm. That's that's what we had decided to uh, look into. That was not accepted. I did talk with um, a member of uh, the Cooperative Extension about maybe doing that for the Lulu Pond parcel, but we didn't get any further than that, so. Um, it is something they could help with, but not with a determined amount of uh, man hours. So one of the things, and I'm not sure if this will relate to that, but one of the things that came up with Fish and Wildlife and CELT for Mallee Farm was moose plate funds that can be used to do well, at least forest. We were talking about it in context of forest management, but wildlife was also discussed. So I don't, I don't know if that's a 
an avenue to get funding for that or not but yeah something that's that's okay. stuff yeah. okay yeah there there are other sources um charitable foundation has some stuff yeah i have no idea how competitive the moose plate is I think funding pretty, is i think pretty competitive because it goes to a broad things um okay. we just want to keep conscious of deadlines and stuff because we do need to if we're going to ask as the city for grants communicate with city council sure. get their blessing to apply and okay. then because they're the ones that would need to um grant us permission to accept the money Vaginal. um yeah especially if there's any monies that we're hoping that are not coming out of the conservation fund for any match requirements and things like that um that would definitely want to rein in director mears um to discuss budgets and things like that access to money that if it was outside of conservation funds that we're looking so if you do catch something we want to grab michelle's attention to um to talk to her about processes okay. and making sure we do the fun um, stuff. Yeah, we, so we, we won't go any further than exploring yeah. Yeah. the funds right. and then contact. Plans. Yeah, if something comes up that you see it and you see deadlines coming up, reach out to us earlier so that way we can, um, especially if it's summer because council meets less in summer. They only meet once a month typically. So uh, what do you think turnaround-wise? I mean, so if, you know, if, I've, if I found out about a grant opportunity in two months, is that not enough time? to work through the city side and probably go to the finance committee right yeah it really depends on the time of yeah yes in finance committee i think so typically things go to like a subcommittee mm -hmm. and then it goes for council for two reads for different things depending um a lot of times it depends on what time of year it is like i said so in the summer they won't meet typically they meet like twice a month but in the summer they only meet once a month so then it gets a little tighter on Mm -hmm. yeah but if you find something and you see it and you're like this is of interest email us about it and we'll okay. see what we can do to help navigate the muddy waters of timelines okay. right. nhacc posts updates on you know upcoming deadlines but you really have to watch it yeah and they're all different you know mm -hmm. right. all right so item two is invasive plan subcommittee report. Uh, Dale is not here. Um, yeah, I've just uh, informally spoken with some people in the city and talked about how you know it will probably need to be a budgeted item, but nothing formal. Uh, item three, exploration of formal conservation of Mallee Farm City Parcel. Yeah, so uh, I think we're on a really solid path <laughs> now. Uh, we met with, we did another field tour <clears throat> with uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, CELT was there as well, so Southeast Land Trust, uh, New Hampshire Fish and Game, and uh, I was there, Angela was there. So kind of, you've, you've been on the tours before, it's very similar. Uh, Dana and Michelle were able to uh, be there for the first part of Dr. it. was I'm sorry. Was Councilor Michaud at the second one? Or? Uh, he was at not this one, the the one before. The one, yeah. yeah, I wanted to keep this one a little bit smaller too, just because I thought we'd be getting into some nuts and bolts type of things. Uh, so Michelle and Dana were there at the beginning, which was really a lot of the good discussion about options and how we would move forward with an easement. We have a at that point, we had a draft um, map of two areas or parcels that would go into potentially an easement. That has to be edited. Um, Michelle and Dana, correct me if I'm wrong on this. I don't want to misspeak for Michelle, but Michelle presented that to, I think, the department heads to, um, I think that's what she called them, the department heads, but it may be something else. Uh, to get feedback on, you know, would this be infringing on any potential management, anything like that, that they had planned. She has feedback from them, and now we just have to meet to go over that and um, and kind of, it would still be a draft of the um, 
perimeters, you know, of this of these areas, but it would be something to start working off of, and then Fish and Wildlife would help us with the survey. And uh, to expand on the um, directors looking at it, so we're probably looking at um, versions on the the treatment plant and and the rec area and the and the drop off and the and the. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the drop off wasn't specifically, so I did take into account some of this, but then I got, I got greedy and I got greedy towards the, um, the waste management plant just because it kind of biologically out there, it made sense. But I think there's some natural also ways to sort of pull back from that. And so it was the community garden, which I did also buffer, but I think maybe I, I just didn't go deep enough. Um, and then what the softball fields and Michelle also, which was a good idea. She suggested that we talk to Rec about kind of how they see the future of the um, softball fields because they have a long, a multi-year contract with USA Softball. Um, so I think that you know maybe they, they would maybe think about adding bleachers or something like that. So um, I like the the plan was to expand that that section a little bit more. To, um, to allow for bleachers and stuff. I, I don't know that that's I don't know that's known. I asked that question, and that was because really when you're out there, that's the only you know that's the place that you would expand into, in which in some ways isn't necessarily a bad thing for us either because it's a wall of invasives right now, anyways. Um, so I'm thinking about you know I, I started making new maps that I can run by um, you know that I can talk with other folks about. But I'm also thinking about a different approach of just really buffering aggressive around the softball field. Because really, that's going to be a transition zone anyways. People are going to have to go in and fetch balls and all of that. So I, I don't know if we just naturally buffer it because of that. That's going to solve, I think, any expansion problems, too. You know, we lose some of the field, but that's also not the fat, like, juicy part of the fields, too. So. Um, so yeah, so that's the that's the critical thing right now is finalizing that map. I think we're set, Dana, right to meet on Monday at two Correct. thirty. Yep. Um, so I'll, I'll go in with a couple maps. I think for that, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was excited. You know, they saw the potential of the site. Uh, we discussed. You know, summers were still having, you know, a lot of say in management and everything, and that would be a partnership. Uh, for sure, uh, they would lean on us. We discussed the, you know, the moose plate funding to come up with uh, habitat management. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm the most confident I've been this whole process of where we're at now. <laughs> you know that the, it could still fall apart uh, for any number of reasons, but at least we're going to be. We have a good group together that we can, you know, finalize what we want to do and then move forward to work that through the city and, and be be easily, you know, easily defend that approach or whatever. Um, you mentioned that we, you know, we, so we didn't get the wildlife action assistance from UNH for Mallee Farm, so we'll just push on on our own on that. That's not a big deal, I don't think. Um, yeah, I think that's it, really. You said the Forest Service was interested, but to what extent? Fish and Wildlife Fish Service. And wildlife, right. They are interested in holding the e they would hold the easement. Okay. Yeah, and and it would be part of their and I'm not going to remember. It's I, I think it's Great Thicket um, Wildlife Management. Um, I don't know if and they call uh, it. It's area. U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Yep. Yeah. Be so one of the that. first ones up here, I but, think they said. Yeah, I think you're right. The first one in New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, so they have some funds to, you know, to help on, you know, so they would help with survey or fund survey. Um, and then, you know, we, we'd be, they were, I, they were, I don't want to say cautious, but they, you know, they have a pot of money for management of all of their properties. And so there may be a chance that we could get help on mowing or something like that, but that's not a, that's definitely not a given, you know. Um, but I think there's some other ways that, that we can go about getting funds for that too. So. Do they have funds for writing the easement? Um, yeah, I, 
I think so. I mean, I, my sense was that they would take the lead with that, but I'm not sure. So we're, we're sounded you know. like it sounded like they would be like kind of a collaborative effort, but it sounded like they would be possibly drafting it with our input. That would be nice. Yeah, I, th I mean, I, my takeaway from the, that meeting especially was that we, you know, I was not concerned about our views being overlooked, if that makes sense. You know, that we would be, a, you know, we would be designing the agreement with them, you know. So once I get the, once we all agree on the, on the perimeter, you know, and the boundaries, then we'll go to them. And I think that'll kick things off. She, the, um, they were talking about a year out for survey just cause it's, they're so busy. So. A lot of pieces in this project. There is, and you know, Lori from CELT has been awesome because you know, in a, in a way, right, they're kind of on the sideline, right, because they were not gonna have an agreement with them, but they're a critical, I think, component of all of this. And so she's been helping to, to navigate a lot of this, find partners, thinking about funding and everything. So, so I think we're in, good, we're in a good place with the group we have, for sure. Great, thank you. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, Mr. Breyer, tree, uh, City Tree GPS Inventory Project. Your mic, is your mic on? Yeah, the whole survey of that street took probably an hour and 45 minutes wasn't that much it's about somewhere between 12 and 15 trees that fall into the, the right of way I can say I had planned on trying to start on Main Street and uh, some of the side streets and didn't get a chance to uh, what I'm hoping is with school ending at the end of the week I will be able to at least get out to the schools possibly the cemetery there'll be less kids and interruptions or right. people asking questions, so. But it seems to go fairly, fairly quickly. And, and uh, are you keeping a spreadsheet? Uh, I've got just the survey sheets and I'll transpose those into a spreadsheet type thing. Okay, great. Um, I did send that um, tree atlas to Jay Lilly, um, the facilities director for the SAU. Oh, okay. So um, it'd be nice to work with him and let him know that we're interested in surveying whatever school. Right. Now, is he the director for all of the schools? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's just one stop shop. Uh, he, he's probably got a plan from AJ for the recent plantings at um, the middle school. And there is quite a bit that's already been done. I mean, they did the survey at call it Elmhurst, Idlehurst. Idlehurst, right. They already surveyed all those trees with the types and everything else. Yeah. The only thing they didn't get, I think, is the the height and uh, diameter of the trees. Do you have that document? Yes. And same thing for the uh, plaza down here. So three quarters of that's done. Yeah. It's coming along. It, it's slow, <laughs> but yeah. Well, a good portion of what we had Identified is, uh, is is done. I mean, you did all of Green Street. Did you say? Uh, basically, down to Stackpole Road. From yeah, I'd, what I'd say it's more than a little. It's not that many trees, though. Right, but, but that's part of the point. Right. Great. Um, let me know. If, you know, if you want me to go out with you or on my own, I would just reach out to the group. Yeah, I mean, I can put something out so you know I'm planning to go out on such and such a day and yeah, whoever's available. I can I can lend you a usually doesn't coincide with working people's <laughs> schedules. So. I can lend you a diameter tape. What's that? You said you you were not getting the diameters. Not on the uh, 
I, on Green Street, yes. Oh, okay. So yeah. you have something to get them. All right. I, I misunderstood. I think he meant that they weren't on one of the... Right. The, uh, the one that was done in Idlehurst, they had all, all kinds of data, but they didn't have height and um, diameters. So they're probably because they were newly planted. Probably. Well, a lot of them weren't, but... All right, excellent, thank you. Any other old business that may come before the commission? All right, treasurer's report. Yep, <clears throat> our balance forward was $264,248.90. We received $1,194.61 in interest, had no disbursals, Bursals, yeah. Ending balance, $265,443.51. Thank you. All right, does anybody have anything else to bring up? I guess I, guess I have, still have a question about the fence in the wetland. I'm looking at the pictures that he provided. That fence is in the wetland. And he gave us a picture of inside the fence. Put a lawn in back. Wetland. I think that was there. Um, yeah. That, that was already there before he moved in. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Anyone have a motion? adjourn i'll make a motion to adjourn i will second that okay the motion is second to adjourn all in favor all right. meeting is adjourned at 7 45. thank you <laughs>